Okay, if you were gonna try to go and buy everything you needed for my tiny fluke setup, which I just did a little while ago, because I'm redoing the whole thing, this is what you would have to go get, other than the actual rod and reel itself, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, I went ahead and I need to redo this one. This one's been set up for a year or so, and the braid's getting ick, and I replaced the leader multiple times, but we are gonna be changing that wonky braid out and put some brand new on. So I went to Bass Pro today, got me a roll of 10 pound Power Pro braid, and don't believe this about braid, it might be two pound diameter now, but as soon as it gets wet, after a while, it's gonna swell a little bit on the spool. And what I always tell people is you can cut that number in half to get the diameter of mono that you think it'll set up. So <clears throat> once this 10 pound braid gets wet, gets a little swollen, it's gonna lay on the spool more like five pound mono. So in a sense, this is gonna be like six pound test line you know, going on your spool at the end of the day, you know, once you fish it a little bit instead of 10 or two. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, it's 10 pound test now, you know, and two pound diameter while it's dry, you know, but once it starts swelling up, that, that spectra fiber, it'll fatten up a little bit. Anyhow, I went ahead and got a little spool of 10 pound fluoro. You could totally get away with eight. I got away with eight yesterday, but I had about a 14 incher saw me in half um, under a lay down when we were flowing so fast, which I know everybody knew about that. But so it's really not going to change the action of the bait since I'm weighing it. So I went ahead and got 10. Um, I may or may not like it. I may switch back to eight, but I think for right now, I'm going to try to go with 10. So I got some 10 pound floral there. It's pretty thin diameter. Went ahead and got an entire new pack. They're pretty cheap of 364 ounce ounce nail weights. Uh, don't know that this matters tremendously, except for I think this would change with the diameter because their length usually doesn't change. And I know just from fishing that that's the diameter that I want. So apparently I've been using 364 ounce. And again, for my tiny fluke fishing, you know, I'm gonna cut this in half. It's not gonna be whole. For one, it would take too much of the action out, and two, it would drop like a rock, and that's not what we want. You know, we want that small fall. Poking around at Bass Pro Shop's hook selection, I went back old school and went to an old Eagle Claw Laser Sharp number two drop shot. They had a, they had a mess of an organization of their hooks up there. It's not like it was when I was there, but anyway, um, I did find these and I like these because they come on that little clip right there. That's really awesome. That keeps them all together. Um, and they're real easy to get on and off. It's not a problem. But that little hook right there is tough, tough beans. Anyway, what you do when you get started. Oh, and that's the bait. That's a power bait three inch minnow. And they come 15 count and I think it's like six bucks a bag. I mean, you'll go through... On average, if you're smacking them and they're really throwing it around and, and nipping at the tail and stuff like sunfish will do in small spots, I mean, you'll go through mm, probably about five on a real good day, you know, because it's going to run up your line. It, it's, it's you know, nose hooked, so it's going to run up the line after you set the hook. But anyway, you know, after you've got half your nail in, you know, and I just take a pair of, of pliers and use the side cutters to just cut it in half and then I wet it and stick it straight down as centered as I can. And once you've got it in there far enough, usually I, I judge it by his little gill plate right there. Once you've got it far enough, I'm about to sit y'all down for a second so I can, well, heck, I can show you on the rig. That's what she's gonna look like. So what I do to judge it, is let me fix him real quick lay that other hook down hopefully i don't lose it is there's a little small nodule 
Let me get focused. Can we focus? Yep. See that little button right there? That little dot when they pour it on the top of the bait. It's hard to focus because there's so much crap in the background it's trying to focus on. There's a small little nubbin right there on top of the bait. And so I'm going through the chin really straight and I'm going like right at that nub and that nubbin is poured in the direct center of the back. So I know it's straight. And then the nail is down here where I'm squeezing. You can almost see it through the plastic. It's right there. And it only goes down, you know, to about his, his back, his center of his back and the rest of his tail is left to flop. But that is the rig that I caught all my fish on yesterday and also lost one good one on a tree because he sawed me in half. Couldn't stop him. But anyway, you're just going to throw that thing out. And as you twitch him across the surface and let him drop, he's only going to go nose down and he's going to fall a lot faster. Now, granted, you can't throw this thing all the way around trees and let it swoop over the trees and all that because it's got an open hook. But for the most part, you know, you're able to control it because you're keeping it you know, all visual and all within sight. I never really let it go out of my sight. Um, you know, probably one thing for fear of, you know, hanging it up. But uh, for the most part, I see every bite I get, which is also really cool. But anyway, if you were going to go do this, and again, you know, I'm doing this on a rod. It's really not meant for bass. They call it the dough bait special. Um, it's a glass type rod. It's a six foot. Um, actually, this is a five and a half. It's a five and a half foot, we call it the nanner stick. It's a light glass rod. It's real, real, real floppy. And just any kind of like size 10, size 15 spinning reel. This is a little size 10 from Bass Pro. It doesn't really matter. As long as it balances well on the rod, you know, you're good. And uh, has a decently smooth drag. The drag on this one's kind of a piece of crap. And I had to, I'm sure Shrimpy saw me hand line dragging the, one of my nice ones yesterday because I don't trust this drag with bigger fish. The rod, in this case, it's so floppy and glassy, it's going to take a lot of the, the fight out of the fish. But still, when it goes to straight braid, there's no giving that. And, you know, I don't trust that $30 reel drag that much. Um, I wish y'all have seen me fighting that 19 yesterday. That was a comedy of errors. But anyway... This is what you need. It's not real hard to get started. Most of you probably already have some fluorocarbon in eight or 10 pound. The hooks to me are a specialty. It would help if you had some of these, but like I say, you get 25 in a pack. You're not gonna need many purchases after that. And then those guys, you can use whatever you want, guys. I've got several other, here's one right here I'll show you. This is a new Yum sonar minnow that they came out with for that dang Damiki rig stuff where guys are sitting on their screens over 40 feet of water with a jig head and just playing video games with it with a jig head but stuff like that you know that's a heavier denser plastic minnow i thought i had another one here that i liked i can't i got crap everywhere i think it's this duo realis yeah i've looked at some of these little duo realis ones too I got them on clearance, obviously, at a tackle shop, and they're okay. They don't behave quite as well, but the the white three-inch, whatever you find, I mean, you could do a tiny fluke by Zoom. You could do a power bait, power minnow, which I love. They have drop shot minnows. There's tons of little straight tail shed type minnow baits that you could use this rig for, but this works. I know it works, so that's what I'm showing you. Anyways, if you want to do this, I literally have a rod dedicated to it. Um, this rod changes to something else for Brim Buster and then comes right back to the Tiny Fluke, and it'll stay on there. Like I told Lindsay, I'll usually fish this rig up until about dead of winter, and then it kind of falls off, obviously. But, yeah, it's, to me, it's worth it. Um, I kind of keep it with me as a safety net. And I'm sure glad I did yesterday. So, again, any questions? I know there was a lot of talk about the Tiny Fluke at the weigh-in. Um, some of you guys have seen me fishing for years. Some of you guys, like you know, Barnes, you may not have fished with me a whole lot. May not know. But if you see that yellow rod on the boat, that's typically what it is. So, again, any questions at all, feel free. 
tiny flute, great for catching numbers, can catch big ones, set it up, keep it in the boat from April thrill through November. And you'll at least be able to put fish in the boat if you got some kind of clarity. But thanks guys. You need anything? Just give me a holler.